Hello everybody, welcome again to the Compass Box channel. Uh, today we've got a very special guest, Mr. Tejas Menon, who goes by Tejas. Uh, Tejas is, I mean, what do I say about you that people don't already know? I am not mysterious at all. I would like to be, but I don't know how to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, like you, you think that, oh, you know, there's a side of Tejas we don't know. Well, oh no, there's geek fruit for that. So you already know that stuff is also equally public as your music, so. Yeah, I don't know. That is true. I, I, I don't, um, I, you know, I, just to maybe start this off with a small anecdote, just so that, boom, and this is exact, this is kind of uh, almost emphasizing the same point, which is that um, my father was recently in the hospital. Uh, a couple of times he's going through some kidney treatment and things like that, and he's on uh, a bit of dialysis. So when I went to the hospital the first time last month, it was just in the throes of us kind of getting ready for this new album that I just released. And while I was there, everybody, you know, you know, when people ask, they're just like, hey man, how are you? I hope you're well. And I almost hate that, hated that I had to go like, yeah, you know, I'm fine. When people ask, hey, how's it going? You go like, yeah, I'm good. But I was just like, I, I hate doing that. And you know, at a certain point, I would, I would hate to lie. And I, of course, I didn't want to do that. So I would say, my dad's in the hospital. My dad's in the hospital. And people go like, oh, what happened? And it's not like, it's not like they're not actually concerned. They're just asking out of it. It's just like, yeah. genuinely, people go like, that's worth asking about. And not all people immediately are worth telling immediately. You know, like, <laughs> that, that, that's like, what happened, yeah. Sometimes you want to say like, oh, yeah, it happened and I'm good now. But, you know, people are asking. And so they deserved an answer. So I did that. So eventually, I ended up writing out a piece for, for Star Wars Day, which I kind of like, likened my father to like Darth Vader and things like that and I wrote this piece and I put it up online and after that everybody kind of responded and everyone said you know lots of nice things it was really really awesome but the, the most important thing about Rag was just like you know I was like unburdened by like any secret about what was happening to me I was unburdened by it you know I've never made uh, uh, qualms about you know I've had, never had qualms about like sharing things about my family that my parents are separated so many things about my life and I've always found that the moment I've been true or about things online or just said my truth or like speak honestly and that's something that I've kept within my body like my work or at least in music, I've been able to be as authentic as I can. But, you know, it's a code to literally just live by, you know. And, and the moment I say things, it my life becomes a little less heavy. I don't know how it, it works, but it's just, you know, you feel empowered and you just want... And people ask you and you're going to get more questions about it, but it becomes easier. The more and more you talk about, the like, whatever trauma or things that you have in your life, just things become easier. So in that regard, I mean, talking about Star Wars and talking about all these things is fine because these are things that are very important to me, music it's especially. But, like, talking about, like, literally everything about me and just all the things about me just does make uh, makes things easier for me. And I've found a way to do it candidly without making people too upset. I don't want to make it, like, a sad trigger warning story. <laughs> But I just want it to be palatable enough for the, so that the, the, the stories, the, the message beyond that is understood instead of just like, oh, this sucks, this happened to me, I'm a victim and all that stuff. I, I want to be able to just tell the story more than anything else. So yeah, so sorry, long answer to a very, very simple question. But that's, that's the reason why I try and go out and be as open as I can about things. No, and so, you know, it, it's clear based on at least what I know of you and like for... for There'll be a lot of moments where we'll be, we'll be referring back to our previous podcast. We, we had a previous podcast. I <laughs> fucked up. We'll move on from that point. But like, yeah. So, I, you know, just talking a little bit about the fact that, you know, honesty is such a crucial component to your music and to your art. And I know so many like, you know, big art. Like, I mean, you're a big indie artist. And I'm trying to think about like, well, yeah, you can make your faces, but you are okay. Uh, I know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I graciously accept. Thank <laughs> you. Very, very Jedi way uh, of, of uh, dealing with that. But so, out of the the big indie artists that I know of, like a lot of them, typically you know of their music, and that's about it. And like occasionally in interviews, you'll see them uh, opening about about other aspects of their life or things that you know people maybe don't know about, but. I think you're one of those artists that pretty much your entire fan base knows like the, all sides of you, you know? And I think that that's pretty unique because I'm, I'm struggling to think about like who is another artist where their fan following and their fan base knows like everything, the geeky side, the musician side, the, you know, the producer side. And, and it's awesome to think that you've managed to bridge that gap by making it Thank candid, you. you know? 
I accept that. I mean, I take that almost as a compliment because, I mean, I you know, and, and not to say that this is the only way. Uh, I I I know that, uh, like you know, the the mystery of an artist. I mean, even prior to like social media being a thing where you can be transparent with people, you know, um, you know, you would know about Guns and Roses and you know about Axl Roses like weird moments, <laughs> and then you know about like you know, but you don't know anything about like their lives or their who they are, what they do, etc. And the internet has done what, man? It's exposed people for their horrendous like things, and and also exposed all the good things. I mean, like when I was remember watching this interview about after Prince passed away. Uh, one of his closest confidants, who was a doctor, uh, he said, "You know, he's like you guys don't even know who Prince is. Like he was a Jehovah's Witness, so he never could talk about like he like just that was his personal belief. So he would never talk about the charitable things he's done. Never talked about like any except for the art, and he made the art larger than life. And while that is something so admirable, and I'm a huge fan, and and you know, for me, I just think maybe it's because I'm a child of this. You know, we're like this. You know, as Warren calls it, the last analog generation." You know, it's like we have like one foot in. We, we're not even the last analog. We're like we have one foot in the analog one and one foot in the digital world as millennials. With, with the lo- with the hybrid generation, yeah. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and it's just one of those things where I feel because we have this opportunity. At least some of my idols, like Katie Tunstall and 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 others, they have been they've lived that that life. Like they live the code, you know. They live the identity, being open and and talking about things. And sometimes it takes time for them to open up. It didn't like it didn't immediately come like with my career beginning because you can't overwhelm people in the beginning. You just gotta tell them, hey, I make great music, or and please listen to it. Uh, and then as soon as they are they want to know why what the song is about, then you start to kind of reveal more things about yourself. And I think I'm just at that point now. Where I, I mean, like one is like, yes, there's a side of authenticity, but the other one is just like. I don't care anymore, you know. Like I just like I don't like I can't be bothered about like um I I and I love brand, you know. I love advertising. I used to work in it for such a long time, so I I'm aware of how much I need to reveal at different moments of time. So now that the album is out, of course I'm going to talk about things, but uh, at the same time, you know, before the album was coming out, I didn't want to reveal too much. I didn't want to say too much. I didn't want to. There's that up and down cycle, man. So you gotta respect that. <laughs> and and I, I don't know. It's a classic way of looking at it. And speaking of and speaking speaking of the album, uh, Outlast, man, I was listening to it the other day, and I went like cover to cover, and uh, I, I even I shared it on like <laughs> on Insta and stuff like that. Oh, what a beautiful sounding album! And I I remember like you, specifically sharing that like I've heard I've heard your other music before, and there's something about this where at least from a vocal even for just from a vocal standpoint because i know you've tried a lot of new so things glad you mentioned that, yeah <laughs> so that's something that i wanted to talk about as well but uh, sure. purely from a vocal performance i mean i have to say this is your strongest performance yet you know and like i know you've done a lot of new things for this album which which you know i want you to talk a little bit about but let's start off with just the vocal performance and the vocal aspect of it is there something that you were you conscious about that in the sense that you wanted this to sound like vocally finesse and like you know hit the right absolutely. yeah so okay t- just tell us yeah, a little bit about that no i think absolutely in the sense that uh because the the attempt was to make uh i you know i the, the, just to kind of preface it i I love independent music, but the things that I love about it are the value systems, right? Like I love the 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 code by which independent music musicians live, you know, like which is you know telling their stories, telling, being authentic about it. All of those value systems are super important to me, and and just like being able to write with integrity, I think that has been like very very crucial to it. But there are things I hate about the independent music scene, right? Like there's it's unstructured, you know, there's not much finances there, you know. This is not on artists. It's like it's it's a whole thing. Some are you know artists are to blame some people some other just the structures that they live in um you know so i so i wanted to be able to make an album a mainstream album like a completely mainstream big ambitious pop album which contain the value system of independent music which is that you know everything that i'm saying on this album is true everything is like written from from personal experience everything that has is there all the lyrics everything is like it's not it's not for like fuck sake you know like a lot of it is real so i even so those two value systems i know they kind of clash at some points because when you're making like decisions you're making like conscious decisions of which way a chord should move or you know which way like a song should go uh you want to be able to you, then you have to kind of pick at that moment but but in terms of just like to say to begin with the vocals i needed them to be able 
to be as precise as possible so two things have happened over the years one is like i think i've become a even though my i think my range overall has kind of like <laughs> lowered maybe by a couple of notes but you've like, better control over that range now yeah it just as you get older i mean you can listen to maybe outlast or you know figure eight or any of these songs and then go and listen to like brave or ruby on the first album and you can just tell how my voice has like gotten like older and it's funny because my voice is slightly higher in in those albums though i will say this is and this is the most interesting thing about it, is that even though the previous albums are sound higher pitch Mm-hmm. the the songs in register are slightly lower because and easier for me to hit this is like the hardest album mm-hmm. it has been for me to hit notes on you know specifically songs like lead and is anyone listening very very hard notes i still struggle with it live and since we have not had the opportunity to play a lot of it live it's uh, it's been it's been difficult to kind of every time i have to just do it on like whim oh here's an instagram show go go quickly sing it live i'm just like no i don't, I don't want to do it right now i need a little prep time please yeah. <laughs> Yeah, give me like we need to tour this. We need to season it, you know, and that that's how I know I can start hitting the note. But um yeah, I think the notes are that the we have like note selection has become higher. I think because I've become more confident as as a singer for sure. And the other thing was just precision, man. You know, I made sure uh I was very lucky to have Arya Nanji at Island City Studios kind of guide the vocal performance in this. Like she tracked all my vocals, but it's different. You know, over the years Warren has tracked my vocals. Tanme Bhattacharjee has tracked my vocals JJ has tracked my vocals and neither of them like all, n- not three any three of those are vocalists yeah they, I I know they understand music and they understand pitch and all of that stuff but there is something about having a vocalist track your you know be the engineer tracking your vocals who can really kind of find the depth like nuances of like delivery and say oh no no I think you should do this and then so we we do the takes and we'll maybe spend an hour on a song and then come back review the, the thing comp it maybe do some corrections come back comp it again and then like whatever minor tweaks i would make on melodyne or whatever and just make sure that it's like fucking like absolutely cut out and the other thing the important thing was to make sure like the thing that i've ignored on all my past albums and this may be giving away a lot of it but like it's just like where the note lands man it's as simple as that where does the note land it has to be dead on it changes yeah. everything if it's not you know and it changes it more than pitch does in many ways like even if you pitch incorrectly but you land on the right like exact pocket it resolves better it feels good it from a listener's perspective yeah yeah better. everything sits so much better and i think we like i really learned so much on on making this album and made, making sure that precision is everything and it, it just not and just to go off from the vocals into literally everything we had a trello board and on that we said okay we had all the list of all the things that we had to kind of check off and then one of the things was like a qa which is like quality you know or qc quality control you know like uh, and we just made sure like you know i i really wanted to do this process where we combed through every single track over and over again to make sure it was dead on locked in time corrected like perfectly pitched and everything was to the t because the ultimate goal i think you know overall is that if you you want to tell a story you want to tell something and you want to you know you, you know just put out a message and if you can't do you can't if you can't say the message to the best of its ability then it that already creates a second channel of information so it's like you know the two channels and one is like can i decipher what's being said and then second is oh what is the message am i reading it clearly so i didn't want that first want to be there at all i wanted to be as perfectly understandable as possible and so you get the most amount of meaning out of it then then really it doesn't become about or oh, how well were the vocals done or how well was the album made it does those become irrelevant like yeah. then it becomes <laughs> like oh what is the album about and and that's it instead of going like stopping at oh i wish this could have been sung better or i wish this could have been tracked better you know then that 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 was like not an option whatsoever so yeah so it just like a few things that really kind of changed the game um and made sure that this is like up there to the best of our ability in terms of how well it could have been mixed and produced to absolute precision no i mean it's like when i was listening to it i i was just lauding at like just the production quality you know and the amount of work Because like when when I make a record and when I make an e- album and EP, I know the amount of work that goes into making something sound sound like marginally better. You know, just just that little bit requires an exponential amount of effort. And when hearing your work, I was like, "Fuck, this must have taken a long time to do that or that." You know, so I was just like, "Man, they really like." It was just. It's it's a it's such a great example of just like attention to detail in the process of producing Thank a song. You so much. 
and I'm, oof. I'm so glad to hear you say Oh, that. man, I was like, I was <laughs> genuinely in, enjoying it. And Pratyay, who's the mix engineer at Compass Box and stuff, even he was right, like, right, dude, right. this sounds amazing. So, I mean, I know like from a vocalist standpoint, like I'm not a vocalist either. So whenever I'm tracking like a vocalist, like when I was doing Mira's album, for example, there's only so much I could do in order to help her and coach her through that process of recording an album, right? I'm recording an EP. Right. So, like, from, from your side, as far as... Okay, so we've talked about the vocal delivery part, okay? Now, let's, yeah. let's move a little bit to the production side because that's the part that, like, I really want to talk about and just know Absolutely. how you guys made it sound the way that... I mean, I was listening to Figure Eight and Outlast specifically, and oof, like... You know, you know that meme, right? The, that that meme, yeah. It's, it's got it's got that sort of like. <laughs> uh, so so tell us a little bit about the production process, working with JJ on this. You know, Absolutely. how long did it? Actually, you know, before we we you answer that question, I want to ask one more for your vocal performance. How long yeah. does it take you to complete the vocals for one song? Mm. This is an interesting question. Uh, I don't know. Th you know, this is really funny that you ask. Okay, so, you know, I've, I have been, like, shooting my, you know, my horn off about, like, just vocal precision, precision, precision. <laughs> there are two songs on this album, uh, uh, which are lead and, and, and story, uh -huh. which are the draft takes <laughs> in my old apartment, uh, <laughs> which is, like, the first take I did. That's it. And uh, and the reason why we kept those is because I didn't want to replace the mood that I achieved on those. And yes, I could have redone it, but you know, there's a, there's other things like stories. A song that is like about eleven years old, and you know, uh, for me, completing that song was was big catharsis for me and very big big closure for me. But the other thing was just that you know that's that what I achieved in that one take doing it. You know, I was just like it was a late night in my old apartment. I don't you know trust me, and I can tell you this. You know when. If you listen to that song absolutely closely, if you have it on, like, if there's a wave file or blah, 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 and I can send you all of those. You can, I'll send you the stems, man. You know, like... I, I, would, I would love it, yeah. So many, uh, you can hear so many artifacts on, on, right. on the story vocal. Like, you can hear slight, like, glitches, pops and stuff. And also because it's been, like, super saturated and compressed because that was, like, the thing that we were going for. Um, but, yeah, you know, so I, I will say that, you know, those... It, it, that indie value system, right? So I didn't want to take that away. Now, if you were in a mainstream, like, pop kind of Columbia record or whatever, you know, they'd make me redo it. Or And, and m here, the words make me is, like, it's it's different also. It's like, there's literally nobody forcing me to do anything, right? It's like, it's all on me and, and other than JJ. So I, I think, um, to answer your question, some of the songs, like, m all of the songs, the takes will take an hour, right? To do all of the takes. And then comping it takes maybe about 30 minutes. And mm -hmm. then like the corrections and like timing and alignment and things like that will take another an hour or two hours. So, but you know, it's it's just a meticulous like deed. And you know, the thing is that you never get it right the first time. Let me just tell you that. Like the other thing is like, you never get the, I, I may do the takes once and I don't want to redo them because I'm just like, this was a vibe, let's keep that. Uh, if there are like few kind of like things here and there, maybe I'll track again. But um, overall, it's just like, those are the takes. But then after that, the, the um, you know, the alignment and just like, you know, and then you have to see where something sits perfectly. I will never get that. I didn't get that right the first time at all this in this process. And because I was doing all of the vocal production on this album, like I was comping them, I was like, you know, cleaning it up, I was aligning and not just my vocal, Vocals, just like all the backing vocals, all the backing. And stacks and stacks right. and stacks. Yeah, so uh, you know, removing breaths, all of that stuff, you know, is just. I remember Warren even told me this. I something I still remember. It's like you know, for male vocals, you keep the breaths, man. It's it's cool. Like you know, he's like he's like girls want to hear that. <laughs> So I've, I've kind of like on some places where there's a big breathy moment, I've like let it go and I'm just like, it's cool. Also, it sounds unnatural. Sometimes you want to hear, especially in my music, you can always hear the breath. So it's just something maintained. But, you know, even the measure of how long the breath has to be, you know, it, like the yeah. breaths don't come in like if it's like a quick break or it's all, not on, it's before the one, then the breaths are like you know, like very, very quick and then they come in, you know, it's like, otherwise, uh, it's just like, it's like these small little dumb things, you know, you really have to make sure that are, you know, absolutely kind of dead on before you go in. So yeah, so the vocals take their own sweet time, like just the actual recording process doesn't take very long, especially if you know the song well, if you're, if you're good with it and you know what you want to do with it, 
it shouldn't take longer than an hour uh, for tracking one song. So. so we talked about the vocal part. Let's talk a little bit about the production in terms of how you approached it, in terms of how you relied on the expertise of JJ and Adil. Like, at what point, like, in what sort of way were they a sounding board to your production ideas and stuff? Man, they have been from the beginning, right? Like, from the first album, they've been there. So I, I think it's more about, uh, you know, they, they understand what I'm going for, like, clearer than ever before. Uh, they know that writing a Tejas album uh, comes with certain things. You know, one is, like, a degree of uh, diversity in sound. And, you know, even when we made the last album for Make It Happen also, I think that, you know, that was suddenly this kind of branching out of like sounds and we were like okay cool we're gonna treat every song as what it needs and i still believe in that and a lot of people kind of go against like a lot of people tell me no you should try and have a cohesive sound for the album but i'm just like i i don't know but the, i i want the thread to t for the album to be tied by my voice and my words that's what i would like for it to be and then you know inv invariably the production kind of does come together i know this this album you know one of the uh, some reviewers just reading of the album said uh, the only thing off putting about it might be that you know the genres jump so quickly and because it's a 30 minute record it kind of it's it's just it's you know keep, trying to keep up with itself almost and and i completely accept that you know as a criticism of the album but at the same time i i almost celebrate it <laughs> like yeah. that it's it's there so i think um jj and adil understand that like thoroughly now that we're kind of taking every song as its own kind of thing and the the themes of the album will tie them together like more than anything else the artwork will tie it together the the vocals will tie it together the the the, the choices will tie it together as opposed to the actual sounds you know so uh, and and i'm in favor of that you know i reserve the right to change my mind later about it <laughs> but um from a starting point, that's what they're really good at. The other thing is that Adil and JJ have also kind of also grown up together now, man, in many ways in the last, you know, so many, like, what, six, seven years. So a lot of the life experiences that we're going through together have been shared and they kind of know, like, we, we understand the emotion, you know, the emotive quality of our, of our lives. Like, I think they are very privy to certain you know all the personal details of my life and they know that you know the things that i've gone through are the things that i also wish to exhibit uh, or exhibition on this album and like in sounds in big emotion i mean like that's this album is not lo-fi or minimal or anything like that's like the opposite it's like this big yeah. and the big emotion and the big swells are, are things that i i see my life as and something that they've also understood so when i say yeah i want strings they're not gonna go like oh yeah no but it doesn't say you know it doesn't feel like this is right i think they know and they get that very well the other thing is that you know like take someone like adil you know i yeah yeah, this is something I find true about myself, which is that, you know, there's probably, there are probably better guitar players, vocalists, drummers, and bass players than the three of us. And they, in specifically each genre, R&B, they're maybe the best R&B bass player or the, or the best, you know, like rock drummer or, or something like that, you know. But the thing is that these guys, and I want to include myself in it, is that, you know, we're not the best at all of these things. But I think what makes us really special is that when we kind of put together all of the of the qualities that we have, then that makes us unique. That kind of like the songwriting, the art, the the editing, the, you know, the, the, the playing of, you know, on each track or, or like being able to pick the make the right decisions on on, on each track or, you know, or, you know, and, and, and those things kind of make us like maybe a little special and that's what kind of has brings us together um i think adil you know is does an insane job you know keeping up with the sheer number of genres he has he is being asked to play <laughs> you know on All this right. thing you know i'll do that too exactly yeah, exactly. I mean, take, you know, like the two songs that you mentioned as well, Figure Eight and Outlast, couldn't be more poles apart, you know, in, right, in, yeah. in style and genre. But he essentially nails both. It's nuts. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like the Figure Eight, um, you know, the bass line really holds the song together. And just the the execution was, is it was amazing. I think, you know, he just, he's also, he's just, he's just become really good over the years. And he's really good at adaptation. I think that's really good. JJ, in the, in, on the other hand, has... Um, you know, while he's still, you know, one of the best, like, you know, in terms of energy and, and or, or just like, like pocket and precision, like as a drummer, he's excellent. There's no doubt. But as a, as a, as a producer and mix engineer, I think he's, he's kind of, he's soaring now. He's like, he's, he's getting to, he's, he's, he's climbing up to another level that, you know, we didn't even 
uh, you know, know that you know we, we didn't we haven't heard before because you know the last album was mixed by Warren, uh, who's already great. So it was right. like, okay, JJ, are you gonna mix this one? He's like, yeah, I want to do it. He was so adamant about it, and of course, it was the right decision. Uh, and you know, it's just it's it's weird because you, there are pros and cons of doing that. I'm sure you get get this right. Like when you play yeah. on the album and you mix it, huge hate doing that. Already. Yeah, hate like, doing that. <laughs> <laughs> to start with just like a huge problem because you're so close to the songs you know and invariably what did you th- what which instrument do you think was loudest in all the first mixes of all of <laughs> and i was just like jd the snare is way too loud or this is like you know you know uh, you know but you know but we you have to move past that and he's a musician ultimately you know the guy plays bass plays guitar plays everything yeah. so it's not just like the drums it's just you know He's, he's, his ear has become like phenomenal um, and and the, and the third thing I want to add is also just that you know I have become a better producer in the last like few years like my first album I co-produced it with Warren but my co-production was m- merely like being sitting with Warren on every single song and telling him no I don't want this I don't want that. and it was more it felt more like you know that musical director vibe you know going like ha, ek dhun aya hai. you know ye, ye, ek dhun aya hai. and then I'll sing it and then one nerdy co- like, we'll actually down. transcribe it down yeah See, yeah <laughs> yeah it was, i'm not saying that warren like followed like everything but you know later in when we were recording it was just like you know he, he was just like he just turned to me and he was like you should be a co-producer on this album i was just like uh why he's just like because you're making so many of the decisions i was like all right cool so I, I i've never wanted to just merely be that because you know it's one of those things where until you physically make the music yourself it's not 100% of what you wanted. Cool. If that makes sense, you know, it's like, it's not 100%. And, you're, and the point is not to have 100% either. It's like, it's a team project. It's a collaboration between you and other musicians. But then there are like certain sections where I don't care about things. Like where I'm like, I'll do whatever you want in this section. You know, feel free. This is your space. And he's like in the in the bridge, the second bridge of figure eight, he does like some amazing bass playing. I feel it's like a little lost because of the sub bass over there, but some um, incredible playing on that. And like, I didn't, have any kind of direction for him i just said do what you feel is right here but then there are some sections where i feel like i am 100 percent adamant i'm just like i will accept nothing else except this patch or this thing you know and me producing this on studio one you know i i produced like a lot of the album at home this time you like forget conversation that entire song was just made on my computer randomly and then when i took it to jj you know he added some extra synths and you know the 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 hats and things like that and the song was essentially done you know so it was not really there was not really much going there it was just that kind of production but um but you know the fact that i did on studio one i produced parts on that uh, jj produced stuff on logic uh, mm-hmm. adil produced some parts on ableton uh, we we mixed a story on luna and then we also mixed the rest of the album on pro tools and it was done in dolby atmos for a couple of songs right. it's just like you know there's so many things happening that there has to be like some some there has to be at least two or three people who have their eye on the prize you know like and essentially in this case it is only three people who are making it so it's just like yeah it's just the three of us to kind of make sure that this album kind of sees you know at least there's a there's a final kind of and this is just the music you know and the album is so much more than that i feel like the stories behind that are so much more the artwork what vibhav singh has done all of these things kind of like really have to coalesce you know and really kind of make sense and 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 those are like the things i think producing this was quite a challenge but it 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 was with the exact people who needed to do the job and yeah yeah (laughs) other than jj man no fair enough and and and, you know speaking of the fact that you know, in some realms in the production, you will have, you'll reserve executive control over that. You'll be like, okay, you know, this is non-negotiable. I want that for sure. Now, Absolutely. now that the album is done and you're sort of looking back at it, what are, what are like your main learnings? Like what are some things that you feel that either from your own production standpoint, from that executive decisions that you've made or like, okay, you know, for my next one, I'd like to keep this the same. I want to keep that workflow the same, for example. I want to keep, work oh, yeah. with the same people. <laughs> Yeah, and- you're nailing all the all of the parts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, tell us. You're so right. You're so right. Um, that's exactly it. Rag. Like I feel like workflow is definitely a huge thing. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear my cats. They're just fl- flipping out. But, um, uh, but uh, workflow is something that we didn't manage to kind of excel with on this record. To be completely honest, you know, we 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 made it like close to perfect to what we wanted but it was not done in the way that should have you know like it was done pretty like uh, haphazardly uh, I, I say haphazardly because it's you know anything that takes three years yeah and is boiled down to 30 minutes it's gonna be like you know 
it's just across many months you're doing yeah. various different things and so in that regard yes it is but i think um, the main learnings have been for me one is like a yes a, yes a workflow as to how we're going to make stuff going forward and this may be completely thrown out the window as 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 far as we're concerned when we do the next one but i i i think we've become a little more proficient at what we do and like and what we're going for you know this this album has kind of been uh, a bit defining in that way for us like that oh okay cool we made something good now let's try and repeat the process to see if this works you know like does this work i mean this is this how you make albums now you know and and uh, and it's the same personnel for the first time we're going to have the exact same personnel making the the next album so so that is highly interesting to me and of course we're going to add more people like definitely want to include Arya and Anji a lot more Malika Barrett a lot more mm-hmm. so so th- you know few people who you know we've identified as you know keep ingredients to this thing so that's one thing the the other thing is that the way we the way I've tried to tell the story of this album and you know I was doing a listening session last night on Discord and I had to preface the album and say oh here are the disclaimers for the album and you know and the disclaimer is such a famous songwriter trope you know saying that oh you know even when you're giving out wip yeah. it's like oh you know the mix is not right the final vocal just, just keep this in mind before you listen to it yeah all the time all the time right it happens all the time but i've when we premiered the album on youtube there was a 10 minute documentary that i wanted to feature like a like a featurette before which is the making of the album before we put the 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 screening i mean like the the premiere of the album and i was just like what is this but not the most professional 10 minute disclaimer to an album <laughs> that you can have and i've just found that you know because it's not like movies and it's not like books where you can actually do a lot of table setting this is just these are just abstractions of of my mind and even if you read the lyrics it can tell you a bit of the story but what is the larger narrative and i feel like being able to preface that um that story and tell people what this album is about and because of the same code that you know we were talking about earlier which is that you know the way i live and the way i kind of communicate to people i think that's become an important part of like what i want to do i want to be able to to explain hey this is why i made this album i'm not just fucking around here i'm just like i mean at the day may come where i just want to do just some fun jams and then i will tell people also that this album is, is just for that yeah I think I mean like it's just like it's just a collection of good jams and I think I'll be able to spin that also into something that is meaningful to me I I just feel like that's this the way I might do it but you know as long as there is a motive behind something I want to be able to explain and being the, the doing the explanation which involves all of the brand work and all of the advertising and all the the trailers the promos the artwork all of that kind of coming together i think i learned a little bit more about that process because i mean most of the last two months after the album was mixed like which was like two and a half months ago i have not been doing any more music <laughs> i have just been sitting on photoshop and premiere pro and cutting promos and cutting like uh, soundcloud banners and these banners and that banner so it's like so that that job has been also very very enlightening and there's a lot of it to go right like we're still trying to make music videos we're trying to do some sessions hopefully you can come to compass box you know like so many things that i think about yeah and um and and you know and 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 so for those reasons that's another big part of the learning of this album is just like you have to not stop once the album is done that's when the work begins you know like really yeah. it's like how are you going to give this you know album to people and how you going to explain why they should be listening to an entire album of 30 yeah. minutes of music in one go in an age where that is just not we're, we're not in that space anymore <laughs> yeah so so and if i can tell them hey there's a story here there is a reason why you know uh, there is a uh, active listening as opposed to passive listening there is something which i think if you just listen to it in one go you will understand about me about this album about yourself that you can't if you just listen to this album in with just singles you know or just with with one here and there or just out of order there is an order there's a there's a delicate kind of balance that has been yeah. made so you know if you respect that you might get something out of it so all of those things man yeah there definitely a lot of learnings that to, like and and then of course i mean lastly is just the technical learnings i mean which is more of an esoteric discussion but like you know just how to produce a good album 
you know apart from all the i mean yes there's the prose part of it which is like oh yeah we want to the ex, you know expression and meaning all of that and then there's this like the actual physical math and physics. yeah oh, the God. actual engineering part oh, of it actual, yeah actual science of making music and that has been man like you know i told you this last time also on our last podcast also which is like you know the thing is like the more you know about music the harder it becomes in some ways man yeah. like you know like Uh, just then you realize it's when we were making music as kids it was just like oh i'll put these chords together i'll put this melody on it i will put this bass part here these drums and then you're just like and it works why because you're doing it without knowing what's happening and because you have a good sense of it if you're a good musician internally like yeah. without you knowing anything you then you're going to be like yeah. you'll make something good invariably you will make something good but the more you understand what that is about and why those made sense why did that work to begin with then you get then you get fucked right because then you go like oh shit okay cool i can't do this and the more you know it's just <laughs> it screws with you so much oh we can't add this bass here and then sometimes and the last thing sorry just to finish this off is that sometimes you have to ignore all of that shit and just go like i fucking like this let's just do it it doesn't make sense it just has to be regardless of the rules regardless of the things that i've learned that say that this shouldn't happen i'm going ahead with it anyways yeah. those are decisions you can make because you're the producer it's it's your album it's your music um so the compass box thing for sure is going to happen like we have to make that yeah, we have to plan that for this year for sure to, and uh yeah. we should do like i mean i would be super excited to do like a complete rearrangement of one of your songs you know that would be dude let's do it soon cool. let's do it soon i'd say let's oh. do it like uh i don't know when flights are opening up but uh i've been partially vaccinated Uh, so uh, I, I don't know when you guys are opening stuff up but I, i mean like when you're free to do it but let's let's do it 100% oh, for sure. i am ready we're, we're actually starting to open up this week um so we oh, haven't we ha- yeah we haven't had any live sessions for the last two months two and a half months actually um so the the last one that we released which is krishna's uh, tamil uh, live session right, right. we have no buffer anymore we don't have any more live sessions to put out for the next like ah, right, right, you know right. like so it's 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 hard <laughs> but you know let's definitely yeah, plan man, for something I- 100% like I'm excited about this it'll be good. Yeah. So okay, so Compass Box is definitely happening. Uh but uh one more thing I wanted to ask you purely from a singer songwriter indie musician perspective because you draw so heavily from personal experiences and you know uh, interactions with people and stuff do you ever feel like fearful or like afraid that you'll run out of stuff to like talk about musically speaking? Oh man, Raghu, you have all the all the right questions. <laughs> yeah, I do. I I am very I am I will say this, there are two things that have happened. One is that I I lost the imposter syndrome I um, may have had like over the last few years. You know, I I was just like doing this thing where we were writing songs and I would hear them back in the studio and I don't know if it's sometimes my ego and my ego I I'm too arrogant sometimes about it, right? And I listen to a song and I'm just like Is it just is it just me or is this like fucking amazing? Is this a banger or what? Like yeah. I I don't know. Sometimes you don't sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you're maybe you're just a, like an idiot, man. I don't know. But like I'm just I would listen to it and I'm just like, man, I love music. I think I like songs which are really good. And I think this song which I made is also good. So is it good? You know, and 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 I think over the years we have just lost. I mean, I I I've lost that thing. Can I objectively write a good song? Yes, I think so. And I think I have to be- start believing that more because if I waste the time in thinking, yeah. oh, I can't, but then all my songs are going to be about that, dude. And I I have more th- things to give. I I think I have more things to share and um and that's my mission, right? Like my mission is to is to, is to move people and is to make them feel something. And uh and 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 I think if I were burdened by the imposter and you know it's a tough thing to overcome, so I'm not even making slight of it. It's like a uh, light of it. It's just that, you know, uh I just think that I have to start believing that now because I'm three records in. I'm, you know, uh, we've made songs that people are endeared to, and 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 so am I. I love all of the music that we've made. So I I have to kind of start believing. So one is yes, I've kind of removed that thing from my psyche for the time being, uh, and um, in that time I need to be able to write songs. And now my thing is like. how many of these can i keep doing you know how many good albums do i have in me and i think uh, yeah, the 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 thing is that this album a lot of like my work has kind of had this if you know emotional quality that people kind of respond to i i think people kind of you know they used to see the comments when we were premiering this thing it was so funny because is everybody was just like oh my god tears crying and, and i was like that's adorable it's so funny yeah. but it's also beautiful man like it's so beautiful that people are like 
like feeling actual emotions and like getting goosebumps and all of that stuff and and it's good and the only way i could you know litmus test that is like do i get goosebumps from my own music and then like oh cool am i doing that and then then we know cool is ready to ship out but i'm saying like do i have to stop writing songs now until i get goosebumps no of course not i don't think that is fair to me and and it's not fair to say that i'm going to write an outlast like every year or every three years <laughs> even you know it's going to take uh, having said that yeah of course i think as long as i keep writing with the same amount of like authenticity or you know um or just like you know i i want to be able to st- still write like true to whatever it is that song requires and what it needs and maybe it won't hit in specific ways that you know the some of the other stuff has you know like people keep talking about ruby the song of mine and like oh ruby is so great ruby is like oh i wish you know and sometimes i get the urge man like i sometimes i feel like shit should i should I try writing another ruby like i'm just like like should i just do that again like you know i and of course you can't but like should i try and mimic that formula and then i was like no why should i even consider that because that song exists and it doesn't need to be recreated it it just it is it's there and now it's more about like like making new things and finding there's it's literally like there's a line in story that says you know like it's getting so hard to find new things to love and i think as you get older you know the that excitement kind of gets replaced by or that enthusiasm gets replaced with experience mm-hmm. and you're not trying to feel you you can get excited about music but you're not going to have that you know that oh same God, exact drive yeah it's just like crushed me ruined me unless it's why your idols are even more senior uh, you know it's like it's it's just one of those things like i don't know um but I, i'm still i'm not saying i'm old i'm just saying that um i do get just a little bit though yeah running out of good songs you know i i do get afraid of that but i still have like i know like for a fact like now that i have there are a bunch of good songs that are still there and you know like i have another i i've started writing another album so it's like that next album after that i can't see anything forward but i'm sure between now and but you've got the next album sort of planned out at least yeah. yeah 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 oh that's that's awesome when are you i mean i don't know how much you can reveal about it but like <laughs> uh at when do you see it being released not be more than 4 years. it cannot be another cannot be in other 4 years okay fine that's a good time frame Because for us to happened, right like it's 2014 Then 2017, so three years there, and then 2021. That's mad, man. I can't, I can't sustain a career releasing albums every four years. That's nuts. Oh, well, you seem But, to you be know, doing fine, okay, that. doing that. So, <laughs> man, no, it's too hard. It's way too hard. And and you know, honestly, I I want to reduce that that time period. I don't think I need to go away for so long to call it a comeback. You know, right, like right, it's right, n- right, yeah. nothing like that. It's just like um, I, I would ideally like to have an album out every two years. I think that seems about reasonable. And, and it gives us a reasonable amount of time to work within um and the thing is that you know things take time because life happens man <laughs> just life yeah. fucking happens in the middle of shit i i've said this before on on many occasions but you know i swear when i was growing up i used wonder what the hell is taking like matchbox 20 or any of these bands to release albums man why are you taking 2 or 3 years what what are you doing in that time and now i understand what they're doing <laughs> life is happening in between those things oh man so, that's As a group yeah. leader, I like what you said in terms of like enthusiasm is replaced by experience. I think that's a that's an important thing that I think you can't like hold yourself against of not having the same enthusiasm consistently because it's it doesn't work that way. We're not wired that's to tough. like It's exhausting. Inspiration has a shelf life. You know, it, it, you can't you you have to constantly replace that and you know, you can't rely on the same source again, right? For the for the inspiration again. It it Yeah, you can't. It, And you know what one second rug people still do that right like that's you can tell who's a bogus artist right like when you know this is bullshit <laughs> like and the problem with it is that the songs will still be good like they'll they'll still be good like you could still write good songs out of literally nothing this is what the entire industry is built upon right that people can churn out love songs for like Yeah. like decades and it'll be fine the songs are good you know objectively speaking but I don't know. I'm not in that. I don't know. I'm not in that business, man. Like I'm not I'm not even saying, you know, and the, I don't know, man. Sometimes I hear the stories and they were like, "Oh, this song was written about a lover." And I'm just like, "Shut the fuck." No, it wasn't. <laughs> Fucking go back to your room, dude. That's not, like that's not true at all. <laughs> that is so disingenuous of you. But you know what? You're selling a story and it's like selling fiction and and it's fine i think that is a huge part of like artistry it's like you're you're creating you know this 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 mythos and you're creating this these ideas and i think that's fine but then 
I don't know how true you can be. You know, at least it, like this whole thing about me talking about my life and my family. I was like, I can't make shit up now. I can't suddenly say, oh, my life was just like this. And no, I can't. People know shit now. It's a, you know, and 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 I I have a feeling that the people who at least that who listen to my music have a very high bullshit meter. Like you know, they can tell if something is is you know like like real or not. I don't know. But see, that's the consequence of being out there, right? Because you have been so liberal about your life and the things that happen in your life, you've trained your following in a manner to be like they can spot when you're trying to BS them. You know? I agree. But I, like I said, you know, if I ever want to put out a bullshit song that I said this was fun and was jammed out in ten minutes in the jam room, <laughs> can I tell them that that's what that was the intention? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I have a band for that, which is called Toy Casher. <laughs> you know, it's just like me, Arifa and Dinkar making dumb punk music. And you know what? It's weird, but there's meaning in the, some of those songs too. It's just like, <laughs> you can't help yourself, man. Like if you write a song, whether it's in five minutes or five years, if you've written it with some amount of integrity, it's gonna, it's gonna escape, man. You, you have no choice. And right. if it's produced well, I mean, that, those are the things, right? Where art and, and technology meet. Like the production is... is part of the art like if you can't deliver the message it just won't happen like it's just then authenticity is doubted you know it's it's weird it's it's such a it's such an incredible world of uh, you know industry we're in you know like uh, it, i mean you know speaking of the industry specifically because you know you've clearly identified yourself as an indie musician you don't want to make bs songs just for the sake of doing it you want to you want to be able to create something meaningful you want to be able to create something that's purposeful that can connect with an audience right so speaking out of your experience as an indie musician as a musician who's been in the industry for a long time now uh released several albums and stuff what what would you think what would be most valuable to tell somebody who is entering this industry with a certain set of assumptions and expectations about how it works what what would you tell a new indie musician just in the scene release their first single super gung ho about everything in life this this album is going to do so well what what, what do you tell them let me just uh, consult uh, this one chat <laughs> <laughs> i knew you'd find a way to like to slowly <laughs> get in there. locked and loaded sorry for those who are watching rag said me that and it was, it's <laughs> amazing <laughs> i have the sith book he has the jedi book so <laughs> uh I, i okay no and and to be absolutely you know it, it, just to be serious about it even uh just for 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 artists who are coming in i don't i really i don't know what to say except um Well, okay, actually, I have a lot of things to say. Sorry. Um, one is try and educate yourself as much as you can about every department of your of your industry. If the the moment I hear, and you know, I don't, I hear it less and less these days because I know kids are super smart and stuff. Like I say kids, yeah, and sometimes yeah. they are like eighteen, nineteen years old making music, seventy, even earlier than that. Uh, I I just think that, you know, educate yourself on everything that isn't even in your wheelhouse right like so whether it's like you know i've always made this joke you know when people say oh, what's the one thing you want to tell musicians i say oh learn photoshop uh and there was a big kind of reason behind that because you know people are going to twist and turn your image and and you know and perception is a lot a big part of what we have as artists like how do you want to be perceived sure. and uh so photoshop I mean, you know a few things in in your design and all that stuff kind of could you are uh, get more control of that but i'm just talking about everything whether it's publishing you know iprs you know your rights What are your rights as a musician? What is the rights that you own by creating a song? What is copyright? What are these things, you know, that these are these mystical terms that everybody has been floating about, you know, since you kind of ever knew what music was about and you hear about all these lawsuits and why are people being sued, etc. Learn what your rights are. Learn about all of these things. I, and I, I you know, everything from the management side to booking to publishing, what is commission? What are all these things? Educate yourself as much as you can and of course it'll happen as you go along. people are entering the industry in the last couple of years i mean you're not been gigging so that when that happens that's going to be like a world of information when that happens and you're invariably going to have people who are not paying you on time you have not made a contract with and they won't they will refuse to have a contract with you because they they intend on not paying you on time so there's just like a there's a bunch of things that you have to educate yourself and that's one uh the second thing is that i you know a lot of a lot of this industry is like just like a lot of industry in general is timing and mm. luck you know and all you can do is you can try and create something which is authentic to you and true to who you are and blah 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 and you can put it out there if it is what the world needs at that moment it will exponentially yeah. increase right like 
I, I give this example of of anyone like Among Us, you know, which is that game which came out, you know. Uh, it came so the game exploded last year because of lockdown, but it's made three years ago and it did nothing, languished for for a long time, and then suddenly because the lockdown was a thing, suddenly that game is now it's everywhere. There are memes, there's so much stuff about that game, and it's just what the world needed at that time. Now, can you anticipate something like a lockdown? No, you can't. So you can't make an Among Us thinking, oh, I'm going to anticipate the the rise of of my my art because of something else. You can't do that. The only thing I can say about the what will be true today that will be true 20 years from now, or 30 years from now, or 40 years from now, hopefully. Is that a good song? Is a good song? Is a good song? And um, and if you if you make stuff with with like the right intention and it's good, I think it can it can stand the test of time a little longer than than other things can. You know, if you're writing for like, and I'm seeing this a lot where you know, uh, just oh man, and I I, I make fun of it because I just find it funny. And I, I I've started writing musical sketch comedy, so I find a lot of things funny and I satire it. But I don't I don't like punching down. I'm not punching down. But I find this funny that you know. When you know people go like, oh yeah, I wrote this song for the world and the lockdown, and it is very noble, but it's really hard to sell integrity uh, without being preachy or like cheesy. It's tough. It's a really tough, tough thing to do, man. Um, I I think it's hard, uh, and 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 so you should like for this album which I wrote. I can only speak about my own experience. It it is weirdly. It's weirdly timely in the sense that, you know, it's, yes, we're in lockdown. The word outlast or outlasting it is yeah. relevant. It is relevant. But the songs were written far before that, man. They were written, like, well before that. But why is it still working right now, I think? And why are people finding some resonance now? I think it's because that that message can work at any time in life, you know? It doesn't matter. It, it would have worked, like... Five years ago, it'll work five years from now. I think this is what I believe. I'm not, I'm, it sounds very high and mighty to say, and it's harder to do. And I, and I, I'm not trying to say that that's really, you know, how I would like to see things, but I just think that don't try and anticipate something, don't try and anticipate a trend. Just, just try and do what you think is right and do it well. Just, I also does this, just do it well. Yeah, yeah, like, that's make songs that are worth <laughs> listening to, you know, like true. Uh, I, I know a lot of people don't like my music as well and like and to them I don't know what to say sometimes you know I just don't know what to say I just go like well if you don't like it you don't like it it's as simple <laughs> as that it's it's fine uh, but you know there are people who will like your music it may not be yeah. that person who you really wanted or it may not be somebody else that you you know you might, you might be surprised but it might be me yeah, yeah. yeah but my, yeah, it'll, 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 it'll surprise somebody and if you do it well just you increase your odds, man. You know the, the just you know the 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 harder you work at the stuff and the better it is, the the higher you know the it it's like a proportional increase in how lucky you are. You'll find that there's a there's a there's a like a sink or at least you know the the prop proportionality between those who are lucky and those who are you know extremely hardworking and put themselves out there is a coincidence there, yeah. right? <laughs> it's just like it's just cause. Um, you know they're they're doing everything they can to do stuff. So they and, and so then luck the 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 odds become higher for you to kind of reach more people. I think anyway that the these are the uh, the few things that I think about. But I don't have any good <laughs> lesson otherwise. You know for for like young people. No, for that for that that's the Jedi path for that. I mean that's the that's the yeah, reading for them the rest, for that. Yeah. And the rest is in the Jedi. Path, so <laughs> you, you know actually we, we we I want you to just read like a random thing from there. Just open a random page. What is it? What is the show? Know, I do have like, man, there is something that I really loved. Aren't the scribbles from like, like you know, Yoda and all the other masters? So like, good. it's so, so incredible. <laughs> uh, this is this is just one paragraph. I'm gonna read from this. I'm gonna try to get in for some e- voice over time. Yeah. Darth Bane and the end of the Sith. The Sith have been the enemies of the Jedi for thousands of years, yet outsiders who viewed them as an inevitable, and even a necessary counterbalance to the light side were proven wrong after the battle of Rusan when the Sith order crumbled. Although danger still lurks among the stars, the citizens of the Republic need no longer fear the title of Darth. <laughs> yeah, look how that changed. Yeah. Uh, doesn't stick. I think the balance is important. There will always be 
a light and a dark and then you have to pick a side eventually <laughs> true, true or you can be the gray i mean a gray jedi as gray. well yeah, you know i was watching uh, i was watching i don't know if you're watching the bad batch which is out now on on disney plus and uh, it's it's incredible and the bad batch is just the story of like this these clones who haven't been uh, turned by order 66 yeah. and all of that and and so they're just like acting as mercenaries post you know order 66 and the empire beginning to be a thing and all that stuff and you know the, and they're just acting as mostly they're just like and so somebody there's a character from clone wars who just says like you know did you realize you were stealing this for who it was going to where it was going to go who was going to make take advantage of it and he's just like you know sometimes it was just easier when i was just a soldier and and she just says to him um well you know there always comes a point in time where you're going to have to pick a side <laughs> and it's just like awesome dude like it's just like an incredible show with <laughs> such a yeah just man star wars man star wars where do you start where do you start with star wars that's that's a problem like the moment cuz i remember when we were having this uh, podcast last time we just got derailed so heavily like off We we just we were talking about the album and music and stuff and the moment we started talking about stars we were showing each other the lego sets and the freaking books and all and we we were like oh fuck man there's like we have to talk about other shit as well so like oh man okay so i want to like is there anything else about your musical like actually i'd like to like give you the opportunity to like share things without a prompt sometimes like like oh. like yeah i mean i'll ask you questions you answer them but like Is there anything you personally want to talk about or share musically about your indie career about production anything from your side unprompted unprompted um ah uh, i i'm not uh, i'm not sure i just think um i think uh, the thing that has helped me most i think in the last few years was like establishing a kind of like tejas like brain trust Mm-hmm. uh as is, is the way i call it like after based based on pixar's brain trust <laughs> yeah, completely honest you know yeah, so many things from disney plus i and disney i've just stolen over the years right like one is you know this whole brain trust thing which is like amassing like a group of people who who aren't fans of you but who are believers in the idea yeah and i think that has been like you know like has been super crucial to me which is that you know finding misfits which is my management who are like ardent believers in what we're doing i told them i had a goal right like i mean this is stupid like but i told them you know i want to i want to be the you know the biggest you know i want to be the best like pop english pop singer in india i mean it's like a small goal to have but it's like i i want i want as many people as possible to hear my music for those people who like english music for those people who like pop music it should definitely be on their radar this is what i want to try and achieve because these are the first people that I would go to with my music so i was like i made this like thing with them and they've just been working tirelessly at it man like they have they have worked really really hard to kind of make that a reality and we have miles to go of course but you know the fact that they are on board they believe they were like yes this is a good reason like reasonable goal to achieve let's try and let's try and nail this one let's try and do our best here them then people who aren't even like musically involved you know like you know denkar uh, jishnu people from like you know who have you know helped me edit my stuff who have kind of like shaped my my vision like they i go to them for advice you know i say like oh should i release it like you know like this this is the pattern this is the way i'm looking at them like no maybe you can tweak this maybe you should edit it this way blah 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 like finding those people who you trust implicitly as a creative person Ooh. jj and adil aside who i of course do but you know web where you have friends who can see be, like beyond the music the music is the hu- the biggest part of it of course but the but there's so many more things to being an artist than just the music if that makes sense no for sure absolutely and, uh, and it's just about that that vision and 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 a lot of people have you know com- like criticized me for not having that dis- dis- like distinct vision maybe for 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 my work that is you know it's just uh, you know to be able to visualize what is the the tejas sound or like what is the look what is the what's the thing and i've tried over the years my best you know to kind of make sure that the design is like a specific way and you know reflects all the values that i love you know whether it's science fiction or you know this energetic kind of colorful artwork and that is drawn from the music i mean the music itself you know lead st- starts with you know like uh, it starts like a star wars movie man it's few things that if you want to try and you know bridge the gaps and i'm i'm lucky to have worked in advertising and you know i understand like a few things and i studied some of this in college as well so i've tried to kind of apply you apply all your learnings you know when you do this kind of work so having these people to kind of apply their learnings as well kind of makes that like a cohesive unit i think you know like in college i i i i would study again you know and i would study something not vocational like i would study like 
like art history or something where right. okay. i could just learn about like other time periods and then you adapt those things into your into your music i mean for this album <laughs> so fun is uh lala who plays the guitar solo on outlast he said hey man so what do you want the solo to sound like and i just told him i was like have you seen the bicentennial man and uh, he he was just like uh, no i haven't seen it i was like dude watch that movie then you'll know what to play <laughs> and 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 he's like oh cool i haven't seen it. do you want to come over and i was like cool so i went over to his place we watched the whole movie and he was just like i was like okay do you get it <laughs> what this <laughs> album is about and he's just like cool i get it um and 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 invariably that was the solo that you know like that he wrote so it was just it, it, you know the the context setting is just is a super important and being able to draw from everything that you that from your life from the art that you experience not just like listening to music and saying i want my music to sound like this or it's reference to this you can reference music like you can reference anything to music you know mm-hmm. like and i'm telling you most of my references to jj this time were all movie references they weren't even like like i i keep talking about this whole kylo ren lightsaber nonsense you know <laughs> like about how I want my guitars to sound like how Kylo Ren's lightsaber looks you know it's just that's one of those things that if I can he, he it's more of like I get it you know rather yeah. than like oh no what does give me the exact reference I'm like yeah, but then yeah. it's going to sound exactly like that thing you know <laughs> so um so yeah I just think those you know those things kind of like amplify the the you know the creative kind of part of it so that I'll say that the other thing about Disney I learned was just like uh they have this process at Marvel in fact Kevin Feige has this pro- process which is called plussing which mm-hmm. is where they create the script they create the movie and like and in pre-production then they were like okay oh, cool this is it now let's break it down again and build it again from scratch you know and they just mm-hmm. and they call that plusing where they keep adding and subtracting adding adding you're mm-hmm. just like more and more making it tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and and that's kind of what you get as the finished product and it's such a it's an it's an incredible process to kind of just be able to say that yo okay cool we made this okay it sucks right now how do we how do we get it to like a point where it is absolutely like best to the best of your ability of course, and yeah. beyond that you can't you know yeah you're you're limited by that yeah get. Of course, and and creativity has to have its limitations. So, and that's one thing. And, and the third thing <laughs> that I'm learning from Disney, <laughs> God, it's a Disney hole. But uh, but is a uh, um, spin-off series, man. That's what I'm doing for my deluxe album. <laughs> I'm just taking the best. I'm just taking the best parts of my songs and turning them into into new stuff. I just think that there's so many. You know, like a lot of people have spoken about the bridges in my songs, and you know, like different sections which they really, really enjoy. And just like wonder, it's like, oh, what if that was an entire song? and i just like i think about that and i just want to try and see and i want people whoever doing any work on this stuff like who's collaborating with me for all the whatever remix or whatever it is i'm just like I, i've give them one strict rule which is that you can't just give me a, a remix which is like you know do stuff and i'll just like you have to add something to it yeah. like i want you to add like a verse or add like your own lyrics or add whatever it is and right. and then it becomes like a big you know bigger than than what it is so i'm i'm trying i'm trying a few of those things i just i just strongly believe in that kind of brand you know i know disney is not everyone's favorite they're like a corporate <laughs> like you know like just um, this mon- you know this monopoly you know like this huge kind of thing uh, i i i just still love their storytelling man ultimately it's it's been always that that thing about them that has kind of inspired me. and they're the masters of that i mean they 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 wrote the book when it came to like visual storytelling in the first place so like <laughs> And, and George Lucas, man, like you know, before prior to Disney, man, the guy is is mm. you know like where where to where to, you know like it's not just and he's not just the story. The guy literally like people don't understand. Like when people go like, oh man, I, you know they'll proud like very proudly like put on like you know social media. I've never seen a star. Yeah, like, I was like why you're not doing yourself you any publicly? favors by doing that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, why would you publicly put out your your own like ignorance? You know, like that just because. people don't understand they love other movies but those movies would not exist without star wars the technology the digital tech he literally created ilm <laughs> like the guy <laughs> changed <laughs> visual effects forever like uh. it's like it's insane it's insane what the guy single handedly did for so many industries sound uh, vfx obviously camera technology and toys man yeah miniatures and stuff like that and the entire yeah freaking Don't people wonder why George Lucas stopped making movies after Star Wars it's because he was handling four empires at the same time <laughs> he did not he, he just didn't have the time and then it took him like what like essentially what 21 years to make yeah. a sequel to that yeah, yeah. It's, it's nuts it's nuts or, or like 19 years sorry yeah 
Anyway, just uh, just a, a, a spare a thought from for our boy George Lucas. <laughs> Give it if you haven't seen yeah, Star Wars yet. Gonna be missing out a lot if you haven't seen Star Wars. You know, like I mean, there's there's so much to be said about about. I mean, I don't know even know like. Yeah, it's just like a lot of words. <laughs> I don't know what to like, say. You, you know, for for people who are like, I'm I'm trying to think of like you know great pieces of work and people then publicly saying, oh, you know, I've never read that. I haven't read Hamlet or whatever. You know, like I mean, exactly. Like like it, exactly. You're so right. You know, it's like one of those things where it doesn't have to be your favorite thing, but it deserves. It's a cultural touch point in history, man. Like it's like g- the Godfather series is is hardly yeah, like my exactly. favorite movie of all time, but you must watch it for what its significance is. culturally you know like and there's so many things that i haven't seen but i'm still open to it because like you know and science fiction may not be a thing but if you have to watch one it has to be it has to be star wars <laughs> you can't you can't do anything else <laughs> yeah like anyway <laughs> no no for sure for sure and you know i mean just to just to like close up like all the things sure. you've said um i i want to just i want to talk about two things in in terms of what you said and and what i think about it and you can correct me if i'm wrong about it but this is what i think this is my perception of it So one component about being a, so- a musician generally speaking and what you were you were talking about in terms of you know good music and at least from your experience and your work good music it draws from elements in your life that are important to you it can be anecdotal it can be hobbies it can be all these things that come together to help you create better music so i think one thing that musicians should and i i agree with this in the sense that i think musicians should also be interesting people you know what i mean like i mean yes know your theory 100% know all the all the fancy stuff that goes in production and stuff but be like be passionate about something you know and it, like not music be passionate about something enjoy something to the point in which it's cringy you know these are things that are yeah. that are important i completely agree i'm i'm telling you this for certain music is not even my number one passion <laughs> I'm telling you it has always been like like movie or cartoons or like you know animation I mean like and these are you know I just I just like great art and that art doesn't have to it, it you know it doesn't have to be um like some of my favorite things for example is Agatha Christie and uh Poirot okay yeah yeah Hercule Poirot, Poirot is, oh, like is yeah one of my like all time favorite like uh all, i've read all the books i've watched the entire series i've done the audio dramas the bbc old school ones everything because i'm just like i just love i love and you know what what is it it's it's a really eccentric belgian yeah. detective solving like murders which you sometimes when i was a kid i couldn't guess sometimes but if i yeah. watched it now yeah. i'm like yeah i know who's done it and why is it you can but what is it about that what why are they repeating the same story 40 times over it's just the motivation as the characters it's the it's the sound it's the it's the depiction it's the artistry of like of the world it's the period piece man i think like that is one of my absolute favorite things for those reasons and and you know the the tv show even elevates that you know because you can see you can feel you can you can just like watch these characters interact it's a mustache it's all in the mustache that's all it's you know it's it's just that and yeah the, and the gray cells and the gray cells yeah. that and it's just one of those things where Like I think that may be one of my favorite things in the world of all time. It's like it's like Star Wars. It's like comfort food. When I put that on, I feel like I feel good, I feel safe, I feel like, you know, this is something that I can watch. Like it's just so unimpeachably good. And and that you know, sometimes that's better than like oh, should I listen to a song? You know, it's just like it th- yeah. so there are things that are bigger and 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 bigger than and is 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 poro just am i saying the tv show is better than an album no am i saying no i'm just talking about poro and the what that en- encompasses like those things are are magical man and i aspire to make stuff that you know borders on that side of things like if people tell me oh i really love this the 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 production on this one song i'm like cool thank you so much but if they tell me oh they just i felt something or when i watched the 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 animation when i watched that visualization like loop over and over and somebody did tell me this that it's like it's almost like stuck in a moment you're like mesmerized by like and there's a larger feeling there then i feel like that was what i was going for like this is not about the music it's not about the songs just individually or just the the units it's about the holistic kind of experience that 
uh, is so impressive to me. Whether it's you know like a lot of the rings, these are the the big epics you know that we enjoy so much and we love so much. It's because it's all of these things like coming together to make something bigger than the sum of its parts. You know, like and 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 that's really what I would love to have. Like personally, if I could do that, it would be amazing. And I hope to do something like that someday. But if my album, in the smallest way, if it can accomplish something. into it then i'm i'm seem extremely proud of that so i think that's that's really what we what we're, we're saying for sure i i mean and and i think that the second thing that that i sort of like learned from how you were talking about especially your your release strategy in terms of the amount of time and detail you go through all your work is that i think indie musicians generally can learn to not only pace themselves but be consistent in their work because you you you're very consistent as a performer as a musician as a at least in the works that you've released there's this there's, there's a consistent improvement or there's a consistent like yeah. detail to attention and and I mean that's important and I think consistency is premised on good pacing as well you know you you can't you can't release yes. you can't release a, a, a new single every week with it being consistently good for example you know i mean some, some people nail it i don't know man like it's okay for for example like dhruv vishnu did this thing last year right where he put out a single like every month man mm-hmm. but he nailed it dude like yeah. the guy he he's also a prodigy it. so I, <laughs> yeah he's also yeah, he's also yeah, a I, don't, I, i don't count him i don't count him like as much because he the guy is is different like he he's just he's just a, he is yeah dude. few people can I, i will say this you're right you know few people can do that uh I think pacing is 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 a natural part of doing anything that takes requires the time and the effort so it's going to be paced whether you like it or not you know but I think in terms of consistency yes definitely there is that you know I I'm you know just small things or you you know you'll only pick like when I work on an album I pick one person to collaborate with like visually right to to make the entire like the the plethora of like you know like sites and you know whatever it is and the visual design and all of that stuff and then i add to it right like what what is what is my work i take that source material and then i make it spill out into the social media or into the into the posts or into this and the track listing thing or yeah. you know whatever it is i just i grab from the in fact whenever i work with illustrators as well i always tell them to make it in layers and i don't tell them to make it in like one single art file you know because i'm just like i'm going to dissect the shit out of this i'm yeah. going to use those components to kind of tell the story in the at the pace that i would like to and and in the way that i would like to so a lot of that yes i i agree and it takes time it takes effort there's no doubt or you you ha- you know the previous album was mira malhotra and studio cold and they are like those guys are branding professionals they, they that's literally their job so they even kind of helped me you know mira who was incredible she of course she did all the artwork and everything but just the way that the colors and you know, the palette was so like decisively selected it was just like such a pleasure to learn from her and from 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 you know just from the people that you kind of work with and you have to man you you, you have to find those people like try and make yourself the dumbest person in the room <laughs> just make sure they're the least like talented person and you will just grow exponentially <laughs> so um yeah man it's just it's it's awesome to 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 work with 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 these people and then like and yeah and then and those things kind of count man as you kind of start building on that and yeah i i hope to continue it like you know even as we speak like in my mind i'm like these things are brewing you know for like what uh, how, now that you know this worked in in many ways you know this album and you know and like people have seemed to have enjoyed it and i'm just trying to see like you know oh how am i going to do this next one and how is it going to be different and how what's the story i'm going to tell there and and there are a few thoughts and things that i have in mind but it's just like those machinations you know begin far earlier you know and and then when you see them happen it's 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 very cool uh, so yeah you have to pick right and and do all of this thing awesome dude thank you so much they just for joining in for uh, you know Always a pleasure, man. enlightening the peeps of the internet uh, it's an important role <laughs> it's That's but amazing. but we should do this more often man it's always it's always so much fun just like chilling and talking with you dude. so like 100% dude yeah should, man, we should and, definitely uh, we will sort out this compass box uh, situation soon yeah. and i hope to do it we'll get that going yeah. we'll get that going for sure all right my man thank you again Very dude easy. thanks a lot thanks man see ya bye bye 
Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast featuring Tejas Menon. Uh, he's an awesome dude, as you could probably tell. And his new album, Outlast, is out on all DSPs. There'll be links in the description below for you guys. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It gives us the opportunity to talk to artists like these, do reviews, and of course, our live sessions as well.